What's up, everybody? It's Eric July, also known as Young Robert 59. I have been talking about doing this video in my streams for a while, but we're finally gonna get to it. How to fix the game Marvel's Avengers. Right now, it is not a secret that it is in a very <laughs> tough spot, for lack of better terms. I'm one of the few content creators that gave this damn game a, a fair shake. I didn't mindlessly shield for the game, nor did I just mindlessly hate um, on the game. We've clocked like 300 some hours possibly on the game, all of them being on stream. And right now I'm like the biggest streamer when it comes to this game, when it comes to concurrent viewers. And that lets you know that the game is not in a good spot. But let's try to be productive. The game can be turned around. It is live service after all. And we've seen this be done with some of the other games like No Man's Sky and what have you. So this video is going to be centered around, and I'm going to be as clear and concise as can be, how to fix Marvel's Avengers. Let's get into it. Much of what I'm going to say will be things that you've either heard me already say on stream or even things that you've seen in my long form write ups on Reddit or my videos. But I want to be as clear as I possibly can be as I make my case because I know even some of the actual fans of the game are going to disagree with some of my points that I'm going to make on the surface, that is. But the game had an uphill battle from the get go. And I've long documented it. And it's not because of the addition of microtransactions, which predictably whipped a bunch of socialist YouTubers in a frenzy. By the way, still, these microtransactions are purely cosmetic and the vast majority of the cosmetic items anyway can be earned in game. But the uphill battle stems from two things, the IP as well as the modeling of the game. Due to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Avengers are about as mainstream as it could possibly get and this game was always going to attract people that are especially unfamiliar with this game type so they had their vision of what they wanted the game to be what it was supposed to be to them as many of them simply wanted to larp at some of the characters that they've seen in the movies this is why you had people complaining that the characters don't look like the marvel cinematic universe characters uh, or their counterparts as if marvel comics started with the marvel cinematic universe but when you couple the IP with how the characters look you see where the expectations were by default they aren't cartoony and they have almost a live action sort of feel to it this doesn't look like games such as Marvel Mega Heroes or Marvel Ultimate Alliance which meant that some people expected a long cinematic experience in which the game just took you through the journey and you played as your favorite Avengers and because they only got that out of really the campaign they knocked the game for their own expectations so while some of this isn't even Crystal Dynamics fault they aren't without blame and we're going to circle back to this point a little later before we talk about how to fix the actual issues of the game let's talk about what kind of game this is at its foundation despite the identity crisis let me first refer to the e3 2019 video where we got our first glimpse of the game it was rather a showcase after showing some of the game's cinematic story this is what the head of studio scott amos and the community manager megan marie had to say about the game <laughs> you've just seen a high level view of the cinematic and character driven campaign of marvel's avengers but launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years with exciting new content released at a regular basis. Like the Avengers, you and your friends are stronger together. You'll assemble into teams of up to four players online where you can master extraordinary abilities, where you can customize a growing roster of heroes and defend the earth from ever escalating threats. Also, the day one blog post states from the beginning, our overall vision for Marvel's Avengers has always been one where players would assemble online to protect the earth and battle the forces of aim as a team. While the entire game can be played solo with companion AI, the game has been designed as a seamless online experience where players would transition from the single player campaign to joining with friends in co-op missions as part of the Avengers initiative. Moving on, the main menu. On the main menu of the actual game, if you hover your cursor over the campaign button, it says single player, the narrative focused campaign experience. 
if you hover your cursor over the Avengers initiative, which is basically everything post campaign, it says multiplayer post campaign game state that allows for playing with others in multiplayer missions and activities gear and artifacts are collected throughout the missions and upon completion of them. You can of course also collect resources among other things to upgrade your gear, which all impacts different stats. The gameplay deals with a level of skill and mastery, not just in you upgrading the characters and mixing and matching what skills you want to perform when it comes to like your heroic abilities and whatnot, but also in the actual gameplay when you consider the combat system just pushing buttons isn't going to get the job done so what is this game in its foundation a looter brawler online rpg in which through the live service they are going to add more and more content it is not a linear experience and the characters are only going to fight as good as you and how you build them the campaign was basically an oversized tutorial. You get a feel of the six starter characters. This game's foundation is not a bad idea. It's what attracted me, for example, to it. If this was a linear traditional single player game, I would not have been as stoked. And honestly, this video wouldn't even exist. The fact that it is live service is why people are wanting to experience more content. They want more content because they expect it. If it was just a campaign, there would be nothing else to discuss, but maybe a sequel or some DLC. The point is that you don't ever beat it, but the problem is that it has these elements and aspects of the game that actually work against its foundation. The game has severe concept design issues and they really show itself at the end game as i mentioned earlier some people that are fans of the marvel cinematic universe or the characters are going to be attracted to the game while being completely unfamiliar with the type of game this is this is why you have people whining about their ranged hulk build being one shot and not being able to jump the entirety of the map or people asking for cap to have a motorcycle for absolutely no reason at all aside from the fact that they've seen them drive one in other mediums considering what this game is is let's now address the problems i'm going to fly through this as i want to go into greater detail of these problems when i explain how to fix them and give it more context obviously the game has technical issues and bugs which have been patched and it's still being patched but let's focus more so on the other issues those issues include the messy design and lack of direction lack of in-game content these matchmaking issues and other concept designs that work antithetical to each other let's first address the companion ai as well as the difficulty adjusting i actually feared that this would be an issue and i discussed this in my initial beta write-up i hope that we see more creativity from other missions this is where i hope the com companion ai doesn't actually limit the potential when it comes to the level design uh, it would be cool to see missions that require all four players uh, to play online which i think we got that we're gonna get that with some of the raids if we hit a wall early that's going to be no good this also applies to the multiplayer aspect only live players it's just the reality of the situation i can say that for any rpg any online rpg i tried to give them the benefit of the doubt you know see it play out a little more even though this was an obvious worry of mine but it clearly goes against the rest of the game's concept design. When it comes to the companion AI, it seems as if they wanted the Avengers experience to be there all the time. They wanted you to be fighting in groups on the battlefield because that's how they envision the Avengers and they wanted it to always be present. This was a rather silly idea because first and foremost, the Avengers don't always fight together at the same time anyway, but perhaps the bigger issue is how it gets in the way of the foundation of the game. The companion AI bogs the game down at the moment. So as long as they have to be present, they have to be present for the most most of the missions, the missions themselves will never have much depth. And no, allowing the people that dare to call themselves solo players on a multiplayer initiative to switch between the four characters after lunch does not fix the problem as that would create loot issues nor does allowing people to simply remove them actually resolve it. As long as the option 
for them to be present is there the missions will never have much depth because they have to consider a wide range of different scenarios you have to understand that the same mission can be played in for different difficulties again a multitude of different scenarios some with one player and three companion ai two players with two companion ai some with all four being live players that is a wide variation and nearly all the missions can be played like this so of course they'll never have much depth to them and that's why i say that the companion ai actually bogs the game down at the moment this also allowed them to be lazy as they lured you in with this idea that the companion ai is your leveled up version of the character which they are but only really in gear and moveset their level scales with the enemies and they're still dumb it seemed like this was was one of their ways to incentivize you to play as the other characters and call it content but it was a terrible idea the companion ai instead should have been left to the campaign or left for specific special missions but this doesn't mean that you couldn't do anything solo of course every single online rpg has that sort of content the idea is to have most missions be played with live players so you can have missions be played with one to four players or two to four players or four players and so forth without the addition of the companion ai each player is accounted for and should be user controlled this allows the developers to narrow their focus when fleshing out the mission types because they know that each person is accounted for with an actual human being so they can all you know really get far more creative instead of these mere hives of repeated ideas they can have the players let's say split up during certain portions of the missions which were ideas that i brought up in the initial beta review not always is being an avenger about some big fight on a battlefield altogether which brings me to my next point which actually ties into these same ideas and that's the difficulty adjusting this is one of the things that really created problems towards the end game currently there are four different challenge levels but they aren't just for select missions or the campaign they are for every single mission so there are currently people playing on four different levels which warrant different experiences for the same missions this is something that even some of the community don't seem to really understand as they ask for buffs and nerfs to characters and enemies. But the main reason it has created issues is because of the loot. I, for example, exclusively play on Brutal, which is the highest challenge. I personally feel that this should actually be the base gameplay, but especially when you have four people, it makes for an awesome experience, which is totally different from playing on easy with companion ai but you have people playing on these different challenges and all of them are griping about the loot because well it's a mess i've clocked two or three hundred hours on this game all on brutal and there are folks playing on challenge one and two that have more exotic gear than myself then on the other hand there are people playing on challenge one expecting to get things like exotic gear upon completion of certain missions. This is how the design works against the other aspects of the game, and it is currently suffering because it attempted to be way too accessible. The changing of difficulty should have been left to the campaign or just select missions like dailies or weeklies. This is why going forward, the missions should just be the missions. You can gate the levels if you need to to prevent like carrying, but there's no need for at least a sliding scale of levels that change depending on what your level is. That almost makes it nonsensical to even collect gear for that very reason. But whatever the level is of the enemies, that's what they should be. This would clean up the loot system as the expectation would be coming from really just one uh, level of perspective instead of let's say four <laughs> now i do know this is more of an open world game but let's look to dc universe online for an example we'll be referring to this game a couple of more times in a bit but when you're in an area the levels of the enemies is, is just that i'm level 75 right now and the enemies are level 24 and in the video that you're watching 
I could fight them by myself, as I am right now, or I could bring some buddies along to help me out. This is a decent model that Avengers could and should adopt moving forward. It is not a crime to have some things unable to be completed or accessed by those who either aren't skilled enough or didn't put enough time or thought into the characters that they are building. This is where maybe the IP gets in the way because Marvel has moved towards this direction of trying to make everything accessed by the wide its demographic but when it comes to a video game especially one that is an online rpg it makes for very bad design so the companion ai and the difficulty being able to be adjusted is currently hurting the game in a multitude of different ways and this brings me to my next point and the main point in how to fix this game and that's committing simply to the fact that this is an online looter brawler rpg this is what makes the game unique and certainly what's going to carry it considering that it is live service after all. It's suffering because it's trying to please too many types of gamers and it is the master of none. I'm optimistic because the gameplay, after all, is the best part of the game. But this appeal to a wide range uh, of gamers, including normies, it didn't even work. Again, I'm the most watched streamer when playing this game and that's not good, but it did a great job in having such differentiation in the character's abilities while also adding a level of thought behind the character building when it comes to the gear and of course the actual gameplay requires you to have skill. Each character feels like it could be how they played in their own game and all of the game is live response there's weight to the moves unlike most other rpgs especially ones that are online but they're currently keeping one foot in and one foot out and again they're the master of none right now because of this idiotically right now the best gear in the game the exotic gear is being held behind two single player modes a 14 floor hive and a heroic gauntlet the gauntlet was the first post launch mission that we got and it is eight different hives. This was stupid as what they attempted to do is encourage you to really have leveled up the other players because you only get one death per character and then they are out. Now I've completed more than one of these heroic gauntlets with using just Hulk. I even have video expressing how I did it, but the concept is still silly. It's a mode that shouldn't even be in the game and it being the first released thing post launch is stupid. This is something that should have been released maybe years from now, but right now it goes against the concept of using a main and lazily considers leveling up the other characters as content. Even on the official Play Avengers Twitter, they use the term main. So why in the world are you trying to funnel people to using other characters? Maining should be embraced, but people don't seem to realize that having these modes, as well as the very companion AI and the difficulty adjusting, also hurts the matchmaking. It's not just technical problems. If you watch my streams, you know I've played with full teams all the time. I've had community days as well, and we've had little to no issues but right now people are being encouraged to play solo due to these silly concepts such as hiding the best gear in the game behind solo modes which hurts the player base on multiplayer missions as we are seeing right now this is what i'm trying to get others to realize isolated some of these ideas some of these features may have seemed decent but when you consider them all put together it actually hurts the game because they work antithetical to one another so going forward what they should do is simply commit philosophically to the idea that this game is in a multiplayer setting with things that can be done by yourself the embrace of maining was something i also mentioned in my initial beta write-up to you see those worries really coming to fruition really does suck but embrace the idea that some people don't want to play as kamala khan or they want to stick to the couple of characters that they've been building up there's nothing wrong with that embrace co-op and build your game around these concepts i understand that adding additional characters is going to be a thing but this doesn't fix the other issues with the game we know that they'll have iconic missions when they introduce the new characters but simply adding new characters will not resolve the other problems that are hurting this game right now this is why i've stated that the game should be more focused on actually adding villains 
and missions and new settings to put the characters in as opposed to having simply new characters. Those new characters become wasted assets at some point if the other issues aren't resolved and Crystal Dynamics does not seem to have the capacity to focus on a million things and to be fair most games do not. Which brings me to my next point which is something that I was actually going to consider a bonus but it'll really bust this game wide open so I will actually consider it as a main point. Let me first refer to a video I did about some screenshots from a UI director of some sort uh, that were uncovered. Under Heroes, it says Inhumans. Not under Factions, under Heroes, it says Inhumans. So when I first saw that, I'm like, obviously this kind of looks like the Black Bolt joint, but I'm like, are they Inhumans? Like, why wouldn't that be under Factions if at some point they're not going to be playable. Basically, it almost felt like the ability to create an Inhuman was actually supposed to be the original concept of the game, and then they at some point pivoted. Whose fault is it? Crystal Dynamics, Square Enix, Marvel, I really don't know. But the customization and social aspects, they're a big part of online RPGs. We have skins in the game, and really that's about it. But again, the design doesn't help. There are six characters on the roster that will never be that big because the characters are so fleshed out. All of those move sets and, and everything else is just too much going on for there to be like 150 characters. So unless the hub was a multiversal hub, it wouldn't make much sense to have a social hub in the first place. And even then it would really seem a little silly to see 45 Bruce Banners or Hulks just walking around. If they added this feature, some of the things that some people are asking for would make far more sense, be it in the social hubs or the open worlds that will allow you to come across other players. So what if the resources that are being dedicated to created new characters were actually used to flesh out builds and skill trees in which people just created their own unique characters to use? This doesn't mean that you had to move away from the Avengers experience. We know there are inhumans all around due to the plot and the setup and your inhuman can become an avenger after all this way they could add more heroes but they'd be npcs sort of like we see in dc universe online while others were actually playable but controlling your own inhuman on patrols or in the social hubs before you drop into a more precise mission could be what could keep this game alive or really make it become alive rather, but it also attract new players. You're talking about working towards a game that has a combat system as is, which is amazing, but the expansive world of a DC universe online. With this setup, you can then have the gear impact the player's look, which doesn't happen with the current other characters and understandably so. But this also doesn't mean that they couldn't add new playable known heroes from time to time. Xenoverse, Two has a decent concept design in this regards. The city and social hub that I walk around, of course, I use my created character, but when it comes to the parallel quest, I can launch them and play with some of the other characters or as the other characters. And it has all of the notable Dragon Ball characters from Goku to Beerus that are available. I don't expect this selection to be this vast on Marvel's Avengers because of how detailed the Avengers is, but you get what I'm saying. This idea to use the created in human, not just for playing, which of course I almost exclusively personally play as my created character, but the point is to open up more opportunities. This gets you social hubs, patrol missions for let's say mining resources, more open worlds to see other live players, clans and things of that nature. Then we are talking about adding other customization like custom bases or helicarriers and layers. This also allows for the traversal elements that people are asking for. They don't make sense, however, but you can always make the flyers fly faster. The non-flyers can be given vehicles. The only issue they'd run into really would be the monetization, of course. Since they've already committed to not charging for the core content, it's harder to sell skins for Black Widow if people are creating their own characters that they can truly customize. Since Marvel seems to be more sensitive though with what the characters that already exist, how they can be customized, what level they can be customized, what skin, 
uh, they're going to be using, probably for merchandise reasons, this whole character customization and creating your own in human really resolves that particular problem the reason why i consider this more of a bonus is because the more i talk about it i feel like it's almost necessary but it's also the least likely to happen even if it is most desired so if we can't get that let's focus on the other core design elements that i mentioned that will make this game more focused it will have direction which is what it lacks right now things such as removing the companion ai and the difficulty adjusting for most future content would solve so much of the loot issues and it would incentivize people to play even more with others which sort of resolves some of the matchmaking problems it will allow them to give every mission some sort of uniqueness some sort of individuality if they prioritize live players instead of this mundane dumbed down experience with these dumbed down assets that are constantly reused because they have to account for a wide variation of different playing situations depending on if they're playing by themselves with companion ai or for live players is such a wide range as we already mentioned and they're all playing the same exact mission the game is in desperate need of some direction right now and it is right now having an identity crisis but it can after all be resolved considering that this is marvel they have a lot of things at their disposal and this is live service a pivot can happen at any time and again it has gameplay that is the best part of the game which most games cannot say that it has a nice balance of complexity within the gear system combining with your skill set and actually playing the game of course but consider this video part one as i have some other things and some other ideas but these are the most glaring issues that have to get fixed almost immediately if this game is not going to be dead after a couple of months there will though be far more to come all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video look man the game can be fixed it absolutely can be fixed but it needs some direction and hopefully this is a video that some of the developers can take a look at and maybe get some some ideas so hope you enjoyed the video until next time y'all be easy peace